who was uh, a Sydney GP, father of seven, grandfather of seven, director of the Waverley Family Centre, president of GLAD, G-L-A-D, a, a national organisation for the teaching of Christian sexuality, and he's uh, a member of the research committee for Foundation Genesis. Thanks for coming in the studio tonight. Pleasure, Fred. Nice to have you here with us, Kevin. You have shared with us on a, some time ago on some other topics, but I thought tonight uh, I'd like to uh, give our listeners an, an opportunity of hearing you as well as speaking to you on the open line because we did have a number of callers who uh, indicated after some of our discussions uh, on various uh, moral issues they'd like to have a doctor they could call and ask the doctor uh, some of the health aspects of uh, moral actions or moral practices or some which may be immoral. And that's why I was, in my introduction to you, I said that uh, I'd like you to talk in general terms as to what is really the cost of the permissive society, perhaps a hidden cost, especially in uh, health terms. It's not what we uh, hear about very much, and uh, I'm sure that many of our listeners will not in any way be um, disturbed by what you say because they are not members of the permissive society. There may be a, a minority who will be disturbed, but I think it's an area of uh, concern where we should be better informed, and I think you're one of the people that's put a lot of work into this area, and you can be of great help to us, uh, to me and to our listeners. I'm wondering if you could perhaps describe the, the situation as you see it at the moment, uh, Kevin, in this area of uh, human sexuality and uh, the sex act, the sex side of our life, which is a very important side. Well, it's true, friend, uh, that it is a very important side of our lives. The only trouble is that uh, in recent times, um, sexual activity, sexual intercourse, the use of the sexual organs has uh, come to be regarded as uh, primarily a recreational activity. The procreational uh, function of the genital organs is pushed well into the background and uh, we've come to adopt a, um, uh, a terminology that's been imposed on us by people promoting these ideas. Uh, for instance, um, the word protected. Um, it's taken for granted that uh, anyone that has intercourse uh, has protected intercourse. Mm. Uh, one might ask, protected against what? Well, the uh, obvious intention is prote protection against pregnancy. Mm. Uh, the organs uh, mustn't be used for pregnancy, anything but. Of course, the pill, which didn't start the sexual revolution by any means, but has certainly fueled it, uh, offers very um, effective protection against pregnancy. Mm. But it doesn't protect against anything else in relation to sexual activity, uh, particularly where the activity is promiscuous. And once there's a departure from a one-to-one -one sexual relationship, well then it is promiscuous and we can expect all sorts of problems. And that's what I call the hidden cost, that even though, well there are also economic costs, but the health aspect seems to be one which we don't fully understand. I, I suppose it's a an area where even the mass media don't spend a great deal of time informing the people because on one hand they promote the, the permissive society and uh, they, they probably don't feel in the position of then telling everybody because you followed our advice. I remember one set of uh, articles in one of the newspapers went this way, uh, read about X sex and uh, a special series and when uh, I got that particular paper and was reading it, it was really an abbreviation for extra sex and extra sex really amounted to adultery instead of calling it what it was, adultery it made it sound like a part of the swinging society that sophisticated people could engage in indiscriminate sex and enjoy themselves and no mention of the real cost uh, in physical terms, health terms as well as emotional and spiritual terms. Now how would you describe the situation facing society at the moment from the point of view of as a result of the permissive society in general, is it true that we would be facing what could be called an epidemic or even a pandemic? Is that a term that doctors use to describe the seriousness of uh, socially transmitted diseases, venereal diseases and so on? Well, that's certainly true and pandemic is the right word mm. because it is a worldwide thing. Mm. The incidence of uh, gonorrhea, one of the commonest sexually transmitted diseases, uh, has become, uh, has risen dramatically. Mm. 
in the last few years, and the um, age group affected is, uh, or principally affected, is getting younger. Mm. In America, it's said that it's uh, it peaks, the incidence peaks in 18-year-olds, mm. the majority of whom would be unmarried. Mm. And, of course, this carries uh, great risks uh, with regard to uh, later fertility. Mm. A yeah. woman might uh, find herself in later years when she's wanting to have children, she'll find that she's paid the price of... Uh, uh, her um, uh, having a good time as a teenager uh, and that she, she's lost her fertility. Mm. And this is a tragedy of uh, the first order. So that's one of the first uh, costs, you might yes, say, that well, you may not be able to have a baby when you want to have a baby. That's and right. you could be infertile. See, or these uh, things definitely affect fertility. Mm. Um, the pill itself may be followed by a period of infertility, mm. even after only short years. Mm. It uh, may take quite some time before fertility is recovered mm. and uh, it may be necessary for a woman wishing to conceive to have special fertility drugs given mm. to her. Mm. That's why I mentioned uh, last week we had some discussions about this book that's just been produced in Victoria called The Little Blue Book for Girls in which it talks about abortion, saying that uh, have abortions as you need them and then you, when you don't want to uh, have any more abortions you can have a baby and there's no mention that, that apparently there's quite a, a health risk there that you may not be able to in fact fall pregnant or avoid miscarriages in later uh, occasions. Well that's true, there may be damage mm -hmm. done to the uterus, in particular in teenage girls, uh, the younger, the more likely the damage is to be, mm. the younger they are because the cervix can be damaged in the process of dilating it mm. to uh, suck out the uh, uh, pregnancy mm. and um, this can result in an incompetent cervix which later makes it uh, virtually impossible for the woman to uh, retain a pregnancy. Mm. And it's not just say one in, in a million, one in a thousand, it could be getting to something like 20%? Uh, well, is there any uh, no, I wouldn't put that? the figure as high as that, but, mm. it, but it is a very significant um, mm. risk. It is a factor that should be considered. It's oh, not, yes, it's and not there so are other risks too, like mm. per perforation or partial perforation of the uterus, which may not show up mm. until a pregnancy mm. occurs. And then, of course, there is always uh, infection. Mm. Um, a certain percentage of them become infected. Mm. Mm. and uh, this may result in the loss of their fertility by uh, the tubes becoming blocked, similar to the effects of gonorrhea. Mm. But uh, one of the uh, things that has alarmed um, uh, gynecologists is the dramatic increase in um, the death rate uh, in quite young women from cervical cancer. Mm. And uh, I saw a figure some years ago that the, uh, the death rate in teenagers in England had doubled. Mm. Um, and mind you, we're not talking about a very common condition, mm. but nevertheless, it's a, a very dramatic increase. There's been uh, an increase in, in cancer cases from the female of the point cervix. of view. And in, yes. within that, you've from got the an neck increase of the womb. Uh, from the neck of the womb, that is with the cancer of the cervix yes. and cancer of the lungs through smoking and so on. It seems if women's liver have really uh, put the, mm. the finger of death on a lot of women in our society. Yes, you feel, well, uh, what would be, the, again, the, the percentages involved there, say, with cancer of the cervix? Would, is there the, any... the percentage uh, is, is not high, mm. but, uh, you know, uh, the uh, cancer of the cervix in the population generally is declining, mm. but it's... Um, uh, these, the same thing is happening now in Australia, mm. that we're getting double the death rate in mm. women under 35. Now, some of our listeners may find it difficult to understand the link between the permissive society and cancer of the cervix. What is the, the link? Well, there are certain factors uh, that come into this, into what we call the etiology or the cause mm. of it. And the uh, important factors appear to be beginning sexual intercourse young, mm. very young before the uh, uh, uterus itself is mature. And also... What age would that be for Well, a, for a uh, 14, 15. Mm. Mm. And uh, this is certainly um, becoming very prevalent in, mm. uh, in adolescents, um, beginning sexual activity very early, encouraged by the um, uh, programs on sex education. Mm. Uh, they're encouraged to experiment, mm. and it is assumed that they will be doing it primarily for recreational purposes, certainly not to get pregnant. Mm. And um, the idea of responsibility in this area is not equated with um, 
remaining uh, uh, abst- uh, of practicing uh, co- uh, abstinence, it's uh, equated with uh, not getting pregnant by use of mm. efficient contraceptives. Did and the pill, of course, won't protect them against this mm. because uh, in many ways it encourage, encourages uh, promiscuity mm. by the fact that knowing that they are unlikely to become pregnant, then they're uh, happy to sleep around. Mm. And this is the other factor, other important factor, is the multiplicity of partners, of Mm. sexual partners. These are the two important things Mm. in the causation of cancer of the cervix. In other words, if if we go back to God the Creator, that he meant us to have one sexual partner, in in a sense, in, Mm. in in a very practical sense. And if you have more than one, uh, this increases the danger of cancer of the cervix. So it certainly does. And uh, at first it was found that uh, cancer of the cervix certainly is very rare in virgins, mm. very rare. Mm. And it's also very rare in those countries that have uh, high uh, moral uh, views about mm. marriage, mm. where broken marriages are the exception rather than the rule. Mm. I'm just speaking with Dr. Kevin Hume, who is the director of the Waverley Family Centre, in response to a number of our callers who said they'd like to hear more about the health aspect of some of these uh, moral issues we've been discussing. We've been talking about the the general issue, I suppose you could call it, of the cost of the permissive society from the heterosexual aspect. And uh, after the Macquarie News headlines, we'll continue our discussion and uh, just see what Dr. Uh, uh, Kevin Hume can tell us uh, in the area of the homosexual because of the uh, proposed changes to our laws Uh, before the Parliament. So after the headlines, we'll go back to Dr. Kevin Hume, and you'll be very welcome to call us on the open line, 2690669, 2690669, if you'd like to put questions to uh, Dr. Hume. We don't particularly want to have uh, someone lecturing him. He's here as a resource person, and if you'd like to ask questions and you're seeking genuine uh, insights, some light on these issues, Uh, either for your own personal point of view or perhaps as a parent you'd like to be able to advise your children or you're a young person who is concerned, uh, please make use of our open line to call us tonight on the Sunday Night Light Show on 269 Air New South Wales wish to inform all people intending to fly to major country centres or the Sunshine Coast that their full schedule of flights is running despite industrial disruptions in other areas of the airline industry. It's business as usual with Air New South Wales. TGB News Talk 87 updating the news. TAA took special steps to shield Pastor Michael Chamberlain from the media when he passed through Sydney tonight on his way home to the Seventh-day Adventist College near Newcastle. Prime Minister Malcolm Fraser is still in great pain after being admitted to a private hospital in Melbourne with severe back trouble. Six volunteer firemen are in Liverpool Hospital after being overcome by toxic fumes during a routine burn-off in the western suburb of Austral. And British police have found 16-year-old Eamon Farrell, who was feared to be the victim of a sectarian kidnapping in Northern Ireland. Mike Bailey, Sydney weather. A shower or two followed by a cool to mild day with sunny periods. There'll be a full Macquarie National News Bulletin on 2GB at 11 o'clock. See the derelicts at night As they huddle from the cold And the kids who'll sell you anything Are screaming For 120 years, the Sydney City Mission has been picking up broken people and helping men shattered lives. Battered wives, abandoned children, derelicts sprawled in gutters. The Sydney City Mission cares for them all without fuss and without fanfare. And so often without thanks. Someone cares enough to help when times get rough and say it's all right. We came to help you. Sydney City Mission. Thank you for being the real heart of the city. Morning, Bill. Good morning. I'd like... I know what you'd like. Some lean bacon, Uh uh, enough kidneys to make deviled kidneys for four, Uh, and... Yeah, but uh, how did you know? With the Mike Carlton Show, Peter Howard. It's the same way every time. Yeah, we listen every Thursday. Mm, I picked up some great recipes off Peter Howard. But I never thought of you listening, though. Well, it's our sort of show, you know, yeah. butcher in the picture. <laughs> uh, no ham today, thanks, Bill. <laughs> the Mike Carlton Breakfast Show, 5.30 to 9 a.m. weekdays on 2GB News Talk 87. 
And you're on with Fred Nile on the Sunday Night Life Show, part of the 2GB News Talk 87, with our special studio guest, Dr Kevin Hume, a Sydney GP, director of the Waverley Family Centre, discussing some of the uh, costs of the permissive society. You've used a term, uh, Dr Hume, you call it... Uh, the use of the sex organs for recreation, recreational purposes. It's perhaps a strange term uh, to be used, or yet in, in many ways I guess that's what people are talking about today more and more in films, television and books. Well, that's true enough. And if you remove the procreational aspect of sexual activity, mm. then you're left with the recreational aspect. Mm. And no one did, would deny that uh, sexual activity... Uh, Sexual intercourse is a very pleasurable activity. Mm. The uh, difficulty is that once you uh, accept that as a principle, then the sex organs become available for all sorts of uses. Mm. And uh, masturbation uh, becomes widely accepted as a, uh, a normal activity, both by homo and heterosexuals. Mm. In fact, uh, the uh, homosexuals and the heterosexuals share this common activity. Pornography becomes accept accepted as a, a, a suitable stimulant for people wishing to heighten their uh, fantasies about sex and sexual activity. And uh, you will find too that amongst uh, heterosexuals, um, the ideas that um, permeate the homosexual groups uh, become accepted. Mm. Uh, things like anal intercourse, uh, oral intercourse, uh, these are uh, readily acceptable to... Uh, in fact, you'll find that the books, the modern books on sex, although they set out to talk about heterosexual activity, um, uh, make a feature of these practices which were formerly regarded as the province of the homosexual. Mm. Now, this blurs the lines very much mm. between homo and heterosexual uh, activities mm. and it's uh, no wonder under these circumstances that people become much more accepting of homosexual activity mm. because a lot of them are indulging in these activities themselves. Now there's no doubt that uh, a heterosexual couple could engage in sex for recreational purposes on occasions but there's no way in which two homosexuals can engage in sex for any other purposes than for recreation and I imagine some of them think well Again, we're not really paying any price for our permissiveness or, or promiscuity or immorality. What are some of the prices uh, that, in the terms of health that homosexuals are paying at the moment? <clears throat> well, I think the essential thing about homosexual activity is that it is promiscuous. Mm. In spite of the fact that uh, a homosexual couple may be living together and sort of dedicated to each other, uh, there is, uh, you'll find there's no objection to them having affairs on the side or... Uh, sexual outlets on the side mm. and um, once there's that departure from the one-to-one -one sexual relationship um, apart from the special problems associated with homosexual activities then we can expect sexually transmitted disease mm. and uh, the um, incidence of syphilis in the community has risen dramatically mm. but it's concentrated in homosexuals so there is a special area of danger a health danger oh, yes. in Tremendous. homosexual activity. Why Tremendous, would that be? Uh, health, uh, well, uh, only recently the medical profession has come to concentrate on some of these things and mm. it's, uh, it's quite dramatic, uh, the things that have been uncovered. In America, there's been a, uh, and, and also it's showing up in Europe, there's been a, um, uh, an epidemic of a, a form of a particular rare but uh, lethal form of cancer called Carposis sarcoma, which uh, appears to be concentrated in homosexuals. Mm. Uh, normally this only occurs in people who've had uh, uh, grafted uh, human organs and uh, have to take uh, suppressor drugs mm. to prevent the rejection of the graft. Well, the homosexuals, uh, due to the high load of infections which they get, their body resistance is so reduced uh, that they get these uh, so-called opportunistic germs getting in mm. um, and uh, an association of these uh, conditions uh, like so Carposi sarcoma, which in homosexuals attacks much younger age groups and um, is extremely lethal. Mm. Uh, is that tied in because of the fact that the homosexuals are taking more antibiotics on a daily basis to prevent the 
effect, the harmful <coughs> effect of... Well, there's a, the even race. a danger in some of the drugs that are used to treat the diseases. Mm. Uh, but then it's also thought that uh, possibly one of the prime factors is the drugs they use for uh, what the so-called recreational drugs. Here mm. we go again on recreational. Um, the nitrites in particular, which are aimed at heightening the orgasm mm. that can occur. Um, and uh, these themselves may be involved in the... Uh, for, in the uh, um, cause of the cancer. Mm. Why would there be more disease with homosexual acts than, say, heterosexual normal acts? Well, the, uh, the acts themselves are enough. Mm. Uh, there's an invasion of the bowel, and one can't think of any rational reason why one uh, should use the anus for intercourse. Mm. Um, the only thing that comes out of the penis is uh, semen, mm. which is uh, teeming with the sperm, and they were certainly never intended to go into the bowel mm. or into the mouth for that matter, which mm. is the other source uh, of uh, homosexual activity. But in addition, there are objectionable practices um, uh, as it were the... Uh, Anal parts are mouthed and, uh, by the homosexuals, and this results in a two-way spread of diseases, mm. both from the uh, person receiving the uh, caresses, if we can call it that, and the one giving them. Mm. And uh, as a result, we've got a, an explosion of these uh, bowel-related diseases. And one of the great dangers is, of course, that although... Um, homosexuals have been traditionally uh, associated with certain occupations. It's now realised that a considerable proportion of them are engaged in food handling. Mm. And uh, some of them engaged as chefs. Mm. And uh, So you're suggesting it could be transmitted not simply through engaging in the sex, the anal sex act, but it could be if, it's, if the mouth's been involved, you've got an oral... Uh, sexually transmitted disease in the mouth which could be innocently right. received well, by another person uh, like the person well, hardly innocently well i mean the other person could be their uh, wife oh yes well of course if uh, they're, if they're or it could be a relation yeah where you kiss uh, your, right. your, your mother or some friend and, uh, at, actually, at a train stop you know a bus stop or something like that and i've actually seen a case in my own practice of a homosexual who presented with a uh, a funny looking tonsillitis which turned out to be uh, syphilis mm. and um uh, his, he and his partner were both treated for the syphilis, mm. but uh, the fellow that had the uh, um, uh, sore on his uh, tonsil uh, had his five-year-old son living with him. Mm. And, you know, they speak of homosexuals uh, being free as adults to indulge in whatever activities they like, so long as it doesn't affect anyone else. Mm. Well, now, it's, uh, that's a very uh, glib and facile way of, uh, in, in fact, naive way of looking at things, because he was one that had his little child living with him, mm. and his mouth was teeming with spirochetes, and it would only be natural to expect him to uh, kiss him goodnight. Mm. And uh, the child was uh, at very great risk. Mm. Uh, so, uh, you know, these things, uh, people don't think about these things. They, mm. they, they think that there's an injustice being done to homosexuals, and I, I'm against injustice done mm. to anyone. Mm. Uh, but we need to think of, of the type of activities that homosexuals indulge in. Mm. It's, very, it's very serious if, uh, and I, I accept what you're saying as true, uh, that where some people have argued this is only a private act between uh, two consenting adults or a, an act between two consenting adults in public which doesn't affect society and that's a, that's a, a myth, that's fallacious but it, uh, it is one that's quoted even in Parliament as if we're not really affecting society by these decisions. Now it would appear from what you've said with employment and, and handling food that the government's proposals, uh, Mr Rand's proposals to bring in uh, the end discrimination uh, amendments to the Anti-Discrimination Act could have far more serious repercussions than he apparently realises, uh, giving him the benefit of at least ignorance. Well, I can't help wondering at the quality of his the medical advice mm. that he's been given. Or if he's had any. <laughs> uh, or if he's had any. Because I'm quite sure that the uh, doctors in the Health Commission mm. uh, are very well aware of these facts. Mm. And... Uh, 
that this, these matters should be brought to the attention of the lawmakers. Mm. It seems as if Mr. Ram may be unaware of even this, what's the new phenomenon when they say the gay plague, you know, to bring in these proposals at the very point where this has become so serious it's hit the headlines. Seems to be uh, almost uh, a political miscalculation in some way. We might take some calls on the open line. Mm. Uh, uh, Dr. Kevin Hume, who is the director of the Waverley Family Centre, is our special studio guest, and this is a result of some of our callers who said they'd like to have an opportunity of asking a medical practitioner rather than Fred Nile, who's just a layman, uh, some of our questions. Uh, we still have to remember we are on air, and uh, the terms that we use have to be acceptable to public broadcasting uh, as we discuss this very sensitive subject. But we'll take some calls in the open line. Uh, right now. Go right ahead, John, with Fred Nolan and Dr. Kevin Hume. Hello. Hello. Yes. Um, may I ask Dr. Hume two questions? Yes. The first one is um, to a husband and wife that are faithful to each other and have all, only had uh, one partner in life, how is it the venereal disease doesn't show up if it's in the world and in our bodies? How is it it doesn't show up in, in, a, in that situation? It doesn't show up because uh, neither partner uh, has the disease. Uh, they can only the, these diseases are transmitted by uh, sexual intercourse and uh, sexually related activities um, in the promiscuous. It, it's the promiscuous persons that spread the disease. And if a couple have, are faithful and have always been faithful to each other, then they will go through life completely free of any of these uh, loathsome diseases. In other words, you're saying the disease is not connected with having sexual intercourse, no, uh, which is quite just, natural within a, a faithful marriage relationship. It's associated with promiscuous sexual activity, whether hetero or homosexual. Mm. I, I'm just wondering, well, um, uh, is it possible that some homosexuals uh, and promiscuous people uh, never get the disease if they've never come up against someone that has it? Well, that's possible, but extremely unlikely. And the more promiscuous they are, and homosexuals are notoriously promiscuous, uh, then the greater the likelihood of them uh, contracting the disease. And if they happen to be bisexuals, then there's a very big risk of them uh, involving their innocent partner, their innocent spouse by spreading the disease to them. Thank you. The second question is, uh, why is it the AMA or the Health Commission doesn't uh, speak out more openly when they know the facts better than the community? That's a good question. Well, what's the answer then? Are you saying there is a conspiracy of silence? That uh, you know, the permissive no, society has been accepted by, by the medical no. practitioners? They've accepted no, the permissive society? I wouldn't go as far as to say that, Fred. Well, the doctors uh, themselves are permissive. <laughs> I think it's about time they mm. started to speak out. Mm. Um, the medical journals are full of the of uh, this information now. Mm. Mm. And you think the doctors are frightened of being charged with being Puritans or, oh, no. or something? Or, no, or I, I think they're just a bit slow to... Mm. So they're, they're noisy about cigarette smoking and other things, aren't yes. they? Yes. Which seem to be a minor problem compared yes. to what we're talking about. Yes, well, it's almost an obsession now. Hmm. Almost everything is due to cigarette smoking. <laughs> uh, I endorse it completely, but mm. I mean, I think they should be a little broader in their uh, outlook, and in particular, I think attention should be given mm. to the medical aspects mm. of homosexual activity. Mm. Do Doctor, may I ask, uh, I've heard it said that 75% uh, of venere reported venereal disease in our society is... Uh, found amongst uh, homosexuals. Is this, is this a correct figure? Well, this is certainly true for syphilis. Yes. Which uh, is the most serious one. Uh, yes, and it's, very serious it's, it's virtually disease, fatal. Would it be fatal the, eventually? Uh, if um, untreated, mm. it could be, yes. 